Hi everyone. In this video, I will talk about the two vibration experiments that we went through in manufacturing systems lab. First, let me briefly talk about underdamped, overdamped, and critically damped system. This plot shows displacement against time. If the system is initially displaced, and, and this point shows the initial displacement of the system, and if zero is the equilibrium position for the system, then if the system is critically damped, it would return to its equilibrium position with no oscillation. And damping coefficient is equal to one. If the system is overdamped, the damping coefficient is greater than one. And again, the system would return to its equilibrium position with no oscillation. If the system is underdamped, the damping coefficient is less than one and the system would return to its equilibrium position after multiple oscillation and the amplitude of the oscillation gradually decreases until the system returns to its equilibrium position. As an example for overdamped system, we have automatic door closer and we have plenty of examples for underdamped systems, buildings, dams, and bridges, offshore structures, all of them are underdamped systems. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is an example of an underdamped system. The natural vibration periods of this suspension bridge are 18.2 seconds for transverse vibration, 10.9 seconds for vertical vibration, 3.81 seconds for longitudinal vibration, and 4.43 seconds for torsional vibration. Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco is another example of underdamped systems. The natural vibration period of this 60-story steel building is 2.9 seconds for north-south and east-west vibration. It means that it takes 2.9 seconds for this building to return to its equilibrium position when it starts vibrating. Natural frequency and resonance. Natural frequency, also known as eigenfrequency, is the frequency at which a system tends to oscillate in the absence of any driving or damping force. The motion pattern of a system oscillating at its natural frequency is called the normal mode also known as eigenvector. Why natural frequency is important? If you know the natural frequency of a structure, then you would be able to avoid mechanical resonance. Mechanical resonance is the vulnerability of a structure to respond at an increased amplitude when the frequency of its oscillations matches its natural frequency of vibration. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State collapsed in 1940 due to resonance. So the forces were applied at a frequency which matched the natural frequency of the bridge and eventually caused the failure of the bridge. So if you know the natural frequency of a structure, you can design the structure in a manner to prevent such incidents. You can see the experiment setup for this lab here. We have three carriages. On each of the carriages, you can place multiple masses. Each mass is half a kilogram. The carriages can be connected with the springs. This third carriage can also be connected to this end with another spring, but the spring is removed for now. The first carriage is connected to the motor with this rod here. It can also be connected with the motor um, to the motor with this spring. This is called the damper, and um, we would do two different experiments uh, using this setup. Here is the setup for the first part of the experiment. Three masses are placed on the first carriage. The other two carriages are fixed in place, and we were gonna only consider the first carriage. So mm, the spring constant is 170 new newton over meter and the damper is connected. 
So the objective of this um, first part of the experiment is to find the damping coefficient, damping constant, and the spring constant, and compare it to the data provided in the manual. Here you can see the schematic view of the first part of this experiment. It is called one degree of freedom because only one of the carriages are allowed to move. The force, the oscillatory force would be applied from the motor to the carriage. The carriage would start oscillation. The damper would damp this oscillation. And from the data, you can notice that uh, it would be damped after three oscillations. You can download the data for the vibration lab from Moodle page. So if you go to this folder, you would find these text files. The first one refers to the first part of the experiment, one degree of freedom, and the other 10 refer to the second part of the experiment, three degree of freedom. I have already downloaded these text files onto my computer. Now I would open an Excel file Go to File, Open, Browse, and find those text files. The first one, Open. Now click on Next. Here you can manage the borders of the columns. You don't want these semicolons here and this square bracket. Click Next and Finish. Here you can get rid of this column, right click and delete, and this column. Notice that we have this column of time that shows time in seconds, this column for commanded positions, this column for encoder one position, which shows the position of the first carriage. The other two columns refer to carriage two and carriage three. So you can also get rid of these two columns because as you can see um, they, the position are close to zero for these two carriages because we already fixed these two carriages in place. So you can delete these two and also this commanded position you don't need this one so you have column of time and column of position for the first carriage. Now I'm going to plot the data. So I would select a part of these two columns. Insert. Select this scatter with the smooth lines. Now you can select data. Edit this series. So if you scroll down you can see that we have 227 some data so I would change it to 227 and then OK OK now the plot is ready so in this plot you only would need the first part of the plot and um, this is the this line shows the equilibrium position of first carriage so after three oscillation, the carriage returned to its equilibrium position because it is damped and the damping system is attached to the setup. So from this plot, you can get some information. So uh, these are the information from this plot. If you hover over any point on this plot, you can get the coordinates. So you would need T1. The time required to reach the first peak, T2 the time required to um, reach the second peak, and period time would be between these two peaks, so T2 minus T1. And then you can also find amplitude at peak 1 and amplitude at peak 2, and the ratio of these two parameters, and then from the manual and the equations provided there, you can find damping coefficient, natural frequency, spring constant, and damping constant. So once you're, uh, you calculate all these parameters, you can compare the, the experimental spring constant 
with the um, information that is provided in the uh, manual. So here's the spring constant from manual. And if you compare, you can see it is way below the spring constant that we get from the experiment, experimental data. And, and it looks like that a wrong spring has been attached to the carriage. And you can uh, mention this in your lab report. You can see the experiment setup for the second part of this lab here. Two masses are placed on each of the three carriages. All the three carriages are free to move, so it's called three degree of freedom. The three carriages are connected together with these springs with 450 Newton over meter um, spring constant. This spring is removed from here. This spring connecting the first carriage to the motor is also removed, but the rod is here to transfer the oscillatory force from the motor to the system. The damper is disconnected because in this experiment, the objective is to find the natural frequency and the normal vibration modes of the system. Here you can see the schematic view of the second part of this experiment. The spring constants are the same. Both of them are 450 Newton over meter. The masses are the same. 1.55 kilogram and the motor will start applying this oscillatory force at different frequencies starting from 1.5 hertz up to 3.3 hertz and the increments would be 0.2 hertz so the computer would record the data at each of these frequencies and the damper is disconnected because we want to evaluate the natural frequency and the normal vibration mode of this system. Now back to the lab manual, we have this schematic view of the experiment setup. So you can write these three equations. On the left side of the equation, we have the Newton's second law and F is equal to mass times acceleration. On the right side of these equations, we have force in terms of spring constants and displacement of each of these three carriages. You can divide both sides of the equation by mass and find these three equations. As you know, acceleration is a function of natural frequency and displacement. So you can substitute for x double dot and x double dot stands for no, acceleration. So if you substitute for acceleration and put everything on the left side of the equation, you would get these three equations. These three can be expressed in terms of a matrix and a vector. The matrix is a three by three matrix and all the elements are in terms of spring constant and masses. Or zero and the x vector shows the position of the three carriages carriage one carriage two and carriage three in order for this equation to be equal to zero either x should be zero or the determinant of this term should be zero we don't want x to be zero because it means that there is no displacement for the carriages and this is not what we are looking for so if you put the determinant of this term equal to zero and solve for natural frequency, you would get three values for the natural frequency. And when you substitute those natural frequencies in this equation, you would get three vectors for x. Those natural frequencies are also called eigenvalues and those three vectors are also called and eigenvectors. These eigenvectors are also called normal vibration modes of the system. Now what are eigenvalues and eigenvectors? For any square matrix with a size of n, while the determinant of the matrix is non-zero, there is a scalar value lambda that fits into this equation. So A is a matrix, lambda 
is a scalar value. You can put this equation in, in this shape. So in order to solve this equation, the determinant of this term should be zero. And I is included here because A is a matrix, lambda is a scalar value. So I is, a, I, is an identical matrix, so it would change uh, this uh, term to a meaningful term. Now, if you solve for this lambda here, you would get n values for lambda, which are called eigenvalues. And if you substitute these eigenvalues into this equation, you would get n values for x, which are called eigenvectors. Now, for the sake of this equation, we have this 3 by 3 matrix for A. And we have this equation to solve. So um, as the matrix is 3 by 3, we would get 3 natural frequencies or on 3 eigenvalues. And substituting these natural frequencies into this equation, you would get 3 normal vibration modes or 3 eigenvectors. The natural frequencies and the vibration modes are provided for this setup in the manual. So the first natural frequency is zero and it, if you substitute this in the equation, you would get this eigenvector and it refers to the mode that you displace each of these carriages for one unit to the right. We also have two non-zero values for natural frequencies. This one you substitute and would get this eigenvector, which refers to this mode of vibration. Displacement for carriage 1 is 1 unit to right. The middle carriage doesn't have any displacement. And the third carriage has a displacement um, for 1 unit to the left. 1, 0, negative 1. And the third natural frequency would be this one and when you substitute this into the equation you would get this eigenvector which represents this mode of vibration. Carriage 1 and carriage 3 are displaced for one unit to the right and the middle carriage is displaced for two units to the left. Remember that in this experiment we applied oscillatory forces at different frequencies and we are looking for natural frequencies and normal vibration modes. So when you plot the data, you're, you're looking for these um, modes of vibration. So considering the encoder 2, the second carriage, it should be, uh, the position should be uh, minimum or zero, or in this case, it should be maximum. So we are looking for these two modes of vibration. I plotted the data for position of encoder 2 or the second carriage with respect to time at different frequencies. So you can notice that the minimum amplitude occurs at 2.1 Hz and maximum amplitude occurs at 3.3 Hz. So these two frequencies are our natural frequencies from the experimental data. And they refer to these two eigenvectors or vibration modes. Now um, you can calculate the natural frequencies from the equation and compare those theoretical values of natural frequencies to these experimental values. Here I have calculated the natural frequencies from the equations that we had. So other than zero, we had these two other natural frequencies for this three degree of freedom experimental setup. So the first natural frequency is 2.71 Hertz. The second one is 4.69 Hertz. They are not equal to the experimental frequencies that we get from experimental data, but the difference is within experimental error range. Here you can see the here you can see the position of carriage one, carriage two, and carriage three with respect to time at this frequency 2.1 Hz, which was the first natural frequency of the system. So we have encoder one in orange color, encoder two in blue, and encoder three in gray. 
If you hover over the peaks of this plot, you can find amplitude for each of these encoders and write it here. And then you can find amplitude ratios and these amplitude ratios refer to your eigenvector. So we have these uh, values for our first eigenvector at this frequency. If you modify decimal places, you can see that it is almost the first eigenvector that we found um, theoretically. 1, 0, negative 1. I did the same thing for the data that we had at the frequency of 3.3 Hz which supposedly is our second natural frequency. And I got this plot. So blue represent encoder 2, orange represent the position of encoder 1, and the gray plot represent the position of encoder 3 with respect to time. So you can hover over the peaks and find the amplitude at, uh, for each of these encoders or carriages and write this here. Then you can find amplitude ratios, which uh, are representative of your eigenvector. So from the theoretical calculation, we got 1, negative 2, and 1 as our eigenvector. But from experimental data, this is the eigenvector that we got. They are not similar, but at least they are close enough.